And as soon as I entered, her beautiful brown eyes fixated on mine. And she said the phrase that Steve Harvey said that no man at no time ever wants to hear. She said, baby, we need to talk. I knew I was in trouble. And I knew that my fate was going downward in a spiral. But then something happened. She looked at me with those eyes. She looked up. She looked down. She looked at me again. Looked away. And looked at me one last time and said, tell me something that I want to hear. I knew this was my only chance. So this is what I said. about our financial situation. But let me place you at ease. Next week, Wednesday, makes five years in at and and I'm hoping for the supervisor's position. And until I get the position, every time they have overtime, I sign up for it. And from January to April, I work for Jackson Hewitt preparing people's taxes. And I'm a performing poet, which means I go from city to city, state to state, selling my books and my CDs, getting paid to perform. And I just formed a corporation with my brother. It deals in real estate, you know, finding, rehabbing, and flipping of homes. And after telling this, I told her, I don't tell you any of this to brag or boast, flash or floss, no. I just simply want you to know that when the mortgage and the bills come due, then on time, the mortgage and the bills will get paid. And if you look outside, well, not directly outside, down the street around the corner, I drive a bucket. It's a hoopty, it's a broke down car. It starts when it's supposed to stop, it stops when it's supposed to start. It's cold in the winter, hot in the summer. And the rear passenger window won't go down. And I've saved it for a new car, but I'm gonna continue to drive this one. Because I told you, you're gonna drive the one we afraid to. So I ask for your patience. See, while I go from work nine to five, get treated like a subordinate. As I go from city to city, state to state, pushing this poetry, as I flip these homes with my brother, I ask him to wait for me. Because I come from a place called Neither. The women before you knew nothing about love, loyalty, or support, but let's not talk about them. Let me expound on the virtue of you. Because I've never seen a woman speak so articulately, eloquently, the way she feels about a man, the way you feel about me, and my ears aren't used to it. See, you like to call me names, but not names that would hurt my feelings. You like to call me your honey or your hun, your sugar, your sugar boo, and my favorite, your chocolate drop. I like that. And you like to put your hands on me, but not to cause me any injury. You like to rub my ball head. You like to place your hand on my shoulder. You like to feel my bicep when I come from the gym to see if it got any bigger. It has. And you like to place your hand on my thigh, not to start anything. Okay, but not all the time. And you like to walk hand in hand down Michigan Avenue because you're proud to be with me. And as good and positive as all those things are, that's strange to me. That are inelegantly etched and have not tried yet. Look inside my heart. You can see lacerations, even when they got stitches from it. They still burn fresh from the pain and suffering that came before you got here. So I ask you, as I take my baggage and take it to the baggage plane, as I get my mind right, my heart right, waiting for me. Now, bring it down. So let me talk to you. I know I ask a lot by asking you to wait for me. But I only ask because you're worthy. And I'm not saying that because I'm some prize or some egomaniac, no. I'm saying that because one, when I look at you, you're beautiful. With my eyes open, eyes closed, my glasses on, my glasses off, wide awake, get sleep, I see you, you're beautiful. Hey, men can't even walk down the street or drive correctly because when they take just a glance at you, they see you and you're beautiful. And you know women can be a tad bit catty, but even they reluctantly, when they look at you, they say, oh my God, she's beautiful. And you got God all over you. And I'm not talking about the fact that you can recite Psalms and Revelations. You go to Bible study on Wednesday, choir practice on Thursday. You arrive early, you go to 
sunrise service, you come late and sit in the overflow? No. I'm talking about that everything you say and do exudes God-like qualities. So I'm asking you to wait for me. Now I know that I'm deficient. I got things to work on. So as soon as I make my half good, I can make it with your good half, and we can form one great whole. So I ask you to wait for me. And if not this lifetime, maybe the next lifetime, wait for me. And if not the next lifetime, maybe five lifetimes away, wait for me. Maybe you're a bird in the sky, and I'm a bird in the sky, wait for me. Maybe you're a beagle, and I'm a beagle, wait for me. Maybe you're a drop of water in the Atlantic Ocean, and I'm a drop of water in the Pacific Ocean. We gotta go up in the air through osmosis. Come back down, it's rain. Land in a pond somewhere near Pleasantville. Wait for the breeze to blow on a Sunday morning for us to finally meet again. And if that be the case, wait for me. Because love inside this man, inside this man, is hard for no one but you. Wait for me. My poem.
I'm sorry. And she has a very handsome husband. <laughs>